Welcome to the Top 10 Greatest Consoles and Game Systems of All Time. This is another episode of the Altered Nostalgic, presented via the Review Space. Let's begin. Number 1. The Super Nintendo. Originally came out in Japan as the Super Famicom in 1990. The Super Nintendo was the main console of choice for gamers that grew up in the early mid-90s, featuring incredible exclusives such as Super Mario RPG, Donkey Kong Country, Yoshi's Island, Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, and Super Metroid. The SNES is a 16-bit powerhouse that provided hours of entertainment. This legendary console gave us excellent fighting game ports such as Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat 2, and Killer Instinct to fast-paced racing games such as Mario Kart and Top Gear, and classic role-playing games such as Chrono Trigger, Bahamut Lagoon, Earthbound, and Lufia. The SNES had an amazing variety of genres from action, platforming, puzzle, racing, beat-em-up, role-playing, fighting, even a few 3D games that pushed the system's capabilities to the limit such as Star Fox and Stunt Race FX. It even had ports of games meant for more advanced consoles, such as Street Fighter Alpha 2 and Doom. Selling well over 49 million units, the Super Nintendo was pretty much unavoidable during my childhood, and many young gamers played the SNES at some point during the 90s. If there's any point of criticism, the Super Nintendo had relatively useless peripherals, such as the Super Scope and the Miracle Piano. It's not that they were bad ideas, but the Super Scope, for example, ate up batteries far too quickly and it didn't have many compatible games that were worth playing, while the Miracle Piano was pretty much just a glorified piano simulator for people who weren't necessarily interested in playing video games. The Super Nintendo cartridges themselves were fairly expensive ranging between $50 to $60 in the early 90s, which would be well over $100 by today's price after inflation. Overall, the Super Nintendo was an expensive system to maintain, but if you got a decent library, you had the best console that money can buy in the early 90s. Number 2. The PS1 originally came out in late 1994 in Japan, easily the most popular 3D console of the 90s. The PS1 put Sony on the map as a formidable gaming console company. From its accessible DualShock controller, its relatively lower-priced CD games, an extensive library of different titles, the PS1 was the first console to sell 100 million units. Some of its best games included titles such as Final Fantasy VII, Metal Gear Solid, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Crash Bandicoot, Resident Evil 2, Tekken 3, Spyro Year of the Dragon, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, Tomba, The Legend of Dragoon, and Crash Team Racing. The original Sony PlayStation not only introduced 3D gaming to a mass audience, but changed how gamers played and enjoyed video games. In the previous generations of the 80s and the early 90s, the large majority of titles were just 2D, top-down, side-scrollers, or isometric point of view. The PS1 brought true 3D perspectives and showcased the evolution of computer graphics during the mid-90s. It wasn't the first system to do this, but it was certainly the most trendy and beloved at the time, outcompeting its rivals Nintendo and Sega in the market during the fifth-generation console wars. Its main criticisms include relatively longer load times compared to cartridges, overheating issues on the older models with skipping sounds, and admittedly uglier graphics compared to the more advanced systems such as N64 and the Dreamcast. In its prime, the PS1 was the undisputed must-have gaming console of the late 90s and has left a legacy for Sony to keep producing games and systems to this day. Number 3. The Game Boy Advance SP First released in 2003. As the updated version of the original Game Boy Advance from 2001, 
the GBA SP model had better features such as a built-in backlight and rechargeable battery. As one of the greatest handhelds of all time, there were so many classic gems available on the little portable. From excellent exclusives such as Pokemon Emerald, Golden Sun, Advance Wars, and WarioWare Twisted, to its various classic NES and Super Nintendo ports from the 3rd and 4th generation. Matter of fact, the GBA got a ton of familiar games that played very similarly, if not identical, to the golden age of the 16-bit era in the early 90s. The Donkey Kong Country series, the Mario Brothers series, Final Fantasy, Mario Kart, Metroid, Mega Man, Street Fighter, Castlevania, even Sonic the Hedgehog all had titles represented in the GBA's library and became a handheld Super Nintendo in many respects. Providing hours of 2D gaming entertainment, the GBA SP was perfect for traveling because it fit like a wallet in your pocket and has an average battery lifespan of 10 to 15 hours. It was also backwards compatible with original Game Boy titles, extending its library all the way back from the late 80s. You can even play the great original Game Boy titles such as Killer Instinct, Kirby's Dream Land, and Donkey Kong Land. The only criticism about the GBA SP is its narrow design, which is not as comfortable as the wider original GBA layout. This makes certain games harder to play because the controls can feel too narrow such as stringing combos together in Killer Instinct or playing a fighting game such as Street Fighter Alpha 3. The GBA SP is definitely the best iteration of any of the Game Boy handheld family and is arguably the best handheld Nintendo has ever released. Number 4. The PSP Originally released in late 2004 in Japan, the PlayStation Portable became one of the greatest and somewhat underrated handheld systems in history. How can something be called underrated if it sold over 80 million units? Because its main competitor, the Nintendo DS, largely outsold and was far more popular than Sony's handheld. The PSP was often criticized by Nintendo fanboys and DS owners who hated it despite never owning the system or they've never played it. The PSP was an incredible portable for its time, featuring great 3D graphics comparable to the PS2, a widescreen layout, and classic PlayStation controls. Its impressive library was full of superb titles such as Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII, Killzone Liberation, God of War Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta, Mod Nation Racers, Daxter, Tekken Dark Resurrection, Hot Shots Tennis, Get a Grip, Smackdown vs. Raw 2011, Soul Calibur Broken Destiny, The City of Final Fantasy, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, and Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. There were even a few collections from Capcom and Sega that gave the PSP some serious throwback appeal and old school flavor from the late 80s and early 90s. Its main drawbacks included the stunted left analog stick, which was cumbersome at times, the lack of a right analog stick, which made first-person shooters very difficult to play, occasional dead pixels, a relatively short battery lifespan, controls that can get stuck in a certain direction, and you might even get the would-you-like-to-quit-the-game screen issue that keeps blinking and popping up. The PSP itself was still an incredibly solid multimedia handheld from the mid-2000s, able to play amazing games and store play MP3s, PSP converted videos, and photos as well. Number 5. The Original Xbox Originally released in late 2001, the first Xbox became one of the greatest consoles of all time, but was fairly underappreciated during its initial run. When Microsoft announced that they were planning to release a brand new console in the early 2000s, most people were skeptical at that time. America hasn't produced any gaming system since 1996, and the console market was largely dominated by Sony and Nintendo. Many gamers anticipated the PS2 coming off the success of the PS1 
and the diehard Nintendo fans stayed loyal to the GameCube. When the Xbox came out in 2001, some people gave it a chance and they were blown away. The graphics were phenomenal and the console ran like a home PC. It had built-in memory around 8 to 10 gigs of storage, which was plenty of saved files back then in the 6th generation. The controller was initially too bulky, but they released a slimmer version, Controller S, in later bundles of the console. Its game library was impressive, full of classic gems and heavy hitters such as Halo, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Fable, Crash Nitro Kart, Soul Calibur 2, Dead or Alive Ultimate, Beatdown Fists of Vengeance, Star Wars Battlefront, Jade Empire, Mechasol, Half-Life 2, Area 51, and Crimson Skies High Road to Revenge. The Xbox had superior graphics compared to the PS2 and GameCube by far, and felt like a true next-gen system for the early mid-2000s. In terms of serious criticism, the Xbox never got any outstanding wrestling games, WWE related or otherwise, and its controller's D-pad was never great for tap-based genres such as fighting games. The Xbox established Microsoft as a home console company and provided Xbox Live as a well-received multiplayer online feature that established Xbox's presence in gaming industry for years to come. Number 6 Sega Genesis Originally came out in late 1988, selling over 40 million units, the Genesis aka the Sega Mega Drive was one hell of a console from the late 80s. Yes, as one of the older consoles in this list, the Genesis was the beginning of the 16-bit golden age of gaming. Marketed as a hot new alternative from the established Nintendo systems, Sega ushered in the early 90s as the fan favorite amongst teenage gamers across North America and Europe. The console featured violent games such as Mortal Kombat, Splatterhouse 2 and 3, The Immortal, and Primal Rage. Eventually, Sega created their own video game rating council to label game content accordingly, which was a predecessor to the ESRB rating. The Genesis also provided excellent 2D titles such as the Sonic the Hedgehog series, Restar, Road Rash, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage 2, Shinobi 3, Earthworm Jim, Disney's Aladdin, Shining Force, Comics Zone, Echo the Dolphin, NBA Jam Tournament Edition, Super Baseball 2020, Mutant League Hockey, John Madden Football, and many many more titles. The Genesis had its share of issues. The main criticisms involved releasing worthless add-ons such as the Sega CD and the Sega 32X, which felt more like gimmick devices just shoehorned in to extend the system's lifespan without actually improving its games. The Sega Genesis is still a legendary console full of important titles that led the pack in the early 90s. Number 7. PS2 Originally came out in March 2000, one of the most successful consoles in history, the PS2 sold well over 150 million units in its lifespan. During the 6th generation, the PS2 didn't have the best graphics. That bragging right goes to Microsoft's Xbox. During the early 2000s, the PS2 did not have any Mario games, or Smash Brothers, or Pokemon games. That feature goes to Nintendo systems such as the Game Boy Advance and the GameCube. During that period, the PS2 was outselling everybody. Why? Why did PlayStation 2 become so popular? Why did PS2 dominate the market share and manage to ship 1.5 billion copies of games? Its initial success was mostly hype carried over from the highly popular PS1 of the mid-90s, and when the PS2 came out, it delivered a multimedia console that played DVDs, music CDs, and amazing games. From Final Fantasy X to God of War 1 and 2 to Shadow of the Colossus, Bully, Okami, Tekken Tag Tournament, Resident Evil 4, God Hand, Cold Winter, Project Snowblind, Black, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 3, WWE Smackdown Here Comes the Pain, 
the Time Splitter series, GTA 3, Vice City, San Andreas, Burnout 3 Takedown, Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition Remix, Scarface The World Is Yours, The Madden series, the NBA Street series, Fight Night Round 3, The Prince of Persia Trilogy, Mortal Kombat Deception, and Armageddon, and so on and so forth. The PS2 has an enormous library of titles from puzzle, action, shooters, racing, sports, adventure, fighting, beat-em-up, wrestling, RPG. Its backward compatibility with many original PS1 games is also worth noting. This increased its already huge collection of available titles. The PS2 brought some of the best 3D gaming experiences of all time, increasing the quality of many older series from the 90s, and establishing its own exclusives and third-party titles as must-have killer apps. Number 8. Nintendo 64. Came out originally in June 1996, the N64 is one of the most influential consoles in history. It may be the most important game system of the 90s and was the beginning of how we played modern games to this day on consoles. Its unique controller and rotating joystick that made 3D gameplay so smooth was influential. Its revolutionary first-person shooters such as GoldenEye, Rainbow Six, and Perfect Dark which gave us some of the most unique FPS experiences in the late 90s and early 2000s, these titles would go on to impact how we played shooters on consoles for the later generations. Its multiple controller slots gave focus to chaotic multiplayer games such as Conker's Bad Fur Day, Mario Party, Diddy Kong Racing, Super Smash Bros, Mario Kart 64. Its Rumble Pack add-on gave that extra sensation to our gaming experiences which we now take for granted today, with almost every regular console controller coming out that has Rumble. The N64 had an impressive library of amazing wrestling games such as WCW vs. NWO World Tour, WCW NWO Revenge, WWF WrestleMania 2000, and WWF No Mercy that provided wrestling fans their vicarious virtual wrestling fix during a boom period in pro wrestling during the late 90s. These titles would influence later games such as the SmackDown vs. Raw series, Def Jam Vendetta, and the modern 2K series from WWE that we see to this day. The N64's main criticisms were its overly expensive game cartridges, the limitations of memory compared to CD-based platforms which limited audio and video cutscenes, and an overall diminished set of third-party titles compared to the PS1. The N64 has a legacy of having a small core group of exclusives that dominated gameplay and innovation, putting emphasis on fun and memorable in-game experiences. Number 9. The Atari 2600 Originally released in 1977, the oldest game system on this list, the Atari 2600 brought gaming to a mainstream audience. Classic and influential titles such as Adventure, Pitfall, Joust, Yard's Revenge, Pole Position, Dig Dug, Missile Command, Super Breakout, Asteroids, Space Invaders, Combat, Frogger, and much more were available on the legendary home console. The game Adventure itself, either from 1979 or 1980, was the first ever action adventure and fantasy video game on a home console. This predated many other games down the road such as Legend of Zelda, Dragon's Quest, and Final Fantasy series. Titles such as Pitfall gave us a fresh platforming experience that would later influence many 2D side-scrolling games such as the Mario series, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Donkey Kong Country series. The Atari 2600 controller is a simple but effective device that became an iconic symbol of console gaming. The graphics of the 2600, its hardware limitations, and overall archaic design is easy to mock and ridicule by modern standards, but it was groundbreaking stuff in the late 70s and early 80s. 
Many people have only experienced video games from the arcades, and the Atari 2600 gave people a chance to play these games in their living rooms. Without the success and legacy of the Atari 2600, we most likely would have never gotten the Famicom, the NES from Nintendo, or the SG-1000, Sega's first ever system in later years. The Atari 2600 is far more important than every single game console on this list because of its impact, popularity, success, and proven market value during its prime. It showed that home consoles and video games can provide people another form of entertainment beyond TV, movies, radio, and music. Number 10. The PS3 Originally released in 2006. What can I say about Sony's 7th gen home console? It has a ton of great games to choose from, either exclusives or third party. A far more reliable console than its main competition. It had great wireless controller that was perfect for just about any genre. Great graphics, resolution, and features for its time, and has aged really really well after 9 years. Its multimedia functions, such as the ability to store movies, music, and pictures gave the PS3 its home entertainment reputation. The PS3's wireless internet feature and accessible home menu provided gamers a very smooth experience, whether they want to watch DVDs or download games from the PSN or just chill and listen to MP3 music. The PS3 provided larger memory capacity, some ranging between 120 gigs to 500 gigs, which allowed you to store a lot of information, store more files, hold more downloaded games, and keep more save files in your system. The PS3's best features are its reliability and impressive library of games that the 7th generation can offer. You can download and play older titles from the past, such as the PS1 or PS2 classics from the PSN. The PlayStation 3's main criticisms were its botched launch and lack of must-have titles in the first year and a half of release. The PS3 would often freeze during certain games and even freeze on the XMB after sharing too many files. And for the longest time, the PS3 just didn't have a strong internet community, particularly the shooter crowds of COD and Gears of War in the Xbox 360. However, after around 2008, the PS3 started to pick up steam, giving us some of the greatest 3D experiences in gaming history. From Killzone 2 and 3, The Last of Us, the Uncharted series, Spec Ops, The Line, Little Big Planet 3, Bioshock 1 and 2, Dead Space 1 and 2, Red Dead Redemption, Portal 2, Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch, Splatterhouse, Enslaved Odyssey to the West, God of War 3, Rainbow Six Vegas 2, Metal Gear Solid 4, Bayonetta, Saints Row series, GTA 4 and 5, Demon Souls, Sleeping Dogs, Borderlands, Assassin's Creed 2, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Soul Calibur 4 and 5, Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed, Tekken Tag Tournament 2, UFC Undisputed 2010, WWE 2K14, and the list goes on and on and on. So that's it. That's the top 10 greatest consoles of all time. These are the best, most impressive gaming systems ever from their influence, from their replay value, from their impressive libraries of games. Definitely a worthy top 10. Thanks for watching this episode of Altered Nostalgic coming to you via the Review Space channel. Check out the channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.